Can we stand our feet and go into worship? I'm thankful today for what God has done in our lives, for what he continues to do in our lives. Water you turned into wine and opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. How many know that to be true today? Say amen. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Come on, lift it up, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Come on, sing into the darkness. Into the darkness to shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes.
aren't you glad he's on your side today? God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness. He's lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. We will shout it out, shout it out. Somebody who shout amen today. Amen. Find two or three people around you right now. Let them know it's glad to be in the house of the Lord with them today as you're seated in this place. Good morning, Expression Church. That was pretty good. Good morning, Expression Church. There you go. Be glad to be in the presence of the Lord this morning, in the presence of your family members and your friends that you come to worship the Lord with. That's what this is all about. We're excited about today, particularly. Uh, not only do we get to entertain the presence of the Lord and see what the Lord's gonna do, but uh, we're excited because today marks six years uh, since we started Expression Church. Six years today, September 29th, 2013, and uh, it wasn't something we were planning on doing, but I see him standing in the back back there, Mike Day, or sitting in the back, and Mike had, was pastoring, the pastor of that church uh, on Adams Avenue had just had a, a, a transplant, liver transplant, I believe it was, and uh, um, he uh, retired. Mike's a business owner, and Mike said, hey, I've got, we've got eight or 10 of us here that our meeting every week, we got a little building. He said, we feel like we're just supposed to roll in with you. And I said, well, Mike, we don't have anything to roll into. We didn't even have anything. I mean, we were just doing awakenings and we were doing radio and writing a book and that, that kind of thing. And so we, we, he rolled into what we did not have, but we, we, we had something real quick. And here's a picture of the very first service at the little Adams Avenue Church. 66 people showed up that first day. We were there two weeks and had to move. Funny thing about that building is not only did they have the church, Quickening Fire, we started the church there. It, we used it as our administrative offices for probably a year or so. And then a good friend of ours pastored a church out in Wayne County. He pastored a church out there for eight years and he felt he was time for him to do something different. Rocky knows what I'm talking about. And he said it was time for him to do something different, but he didn't really have the, 
the know-how to how to do something different because he was so entrenched in this church for years. So on a Wednesday night, we had, he and I had coffee every, every year for about, a, a, every Thursday for about a year. And every Thursday he would come in and say, hey, I, I gotta do something different. But every Thursday, it was always the same. He's gotta do something different. So finally, in the Lord's grace, the board kicked him out one Wednesday night. It was the best thing that ever happened to him. Because I had another year to go through of coffee on Thursday morning talking about what, the, what he was gonna do. And finally the board said, it's time for you to go a different direction. He came to me and he said, hey, next, Thursday, next morning, he came to me and he said, I don't know what we're gonna do. He said, uh, I'm not there anymore. And I said, uh, well, it's time to start your church. He said, where? I said, a little white building on Adams Avenue. And I said, well, nobody's using it during services on Sunday morning? And he said, you're kidding me. He said, nope, we've outgrown it, we're moving on. And he said, okay. He said, I don't have any chairs. I said, we've got chairs. He said, we don't have a sound system. I said, we've got a sound system. So in a matter of a few minutes, Rocky put the manpower to it. We put the stuff behind it. Dale went down, set him up. And since that time, they were in there probably a year and a half, probably or so. They have outgrown that building and they moved into their own location. Isn't that great? So Mike, thank you for offering that. And people all over the city are being touched right now because of your obedience. So we outgrew that and we're, thought, we're honored and thankful. We had no idea, we, it's just been a journey. We moved 12, loca 12 times, 10 locations. And um, many of you all were with us through all those, those transitions. Some of you witnessed it and been a part of it and it's just difficult to, to transition, but thank God we're, we found a place, a home we own, and God has given us this whole area here. So we're, uh, we're blessed. Um, but the main thing is now we get to equip the mission of this church from the very beginning, I was on my way to Beckley, West Virginia to preach before the church ever started. And he gave me this story about Jesus coming up out of the water to be baptized. And when he came up out of the water to be baptized, the, the, the father said to the son, to Jesus, he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Then the spirit of God led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And then after he was there for 40 days, he came out of the wilderness and he was released into society and culture, life. So in a matter of a moment, maybe five minutes or less, the Lord says Jesus was the expression of God, expression, he's the expression of God in everyday real life. And we're to be the expression of Christ in everyday real life. And we do that by identifying, this is my son whom I'm well pleased, identify, affirm whom I'm well pleased, equipping by sending him into the, the world or the wilderness to be tempted, because in that temptation, in that trial, in that tribulation, in that, in that argument, in the battle, in the, in the trenches, that's really when you're being equipped. And then, as you go through seasons of equipping, you get released into your life, everyday mission of life, what your purpose is. Identify, affirm, equip, and release to be the expression of Christ in everyday life. Six years later, we're doing that. I've, I mean, countless people have I seen come so we can unlock and get released into what God's called them to be, countless people. And I'm here, two, guy, two of them here today. We had a part of that, we weren't the only people, there was a lot of other people a part of that, but Rocky and Helen, thank you for being here today with Lifehouse to celebrate us in our six year anniversary. <laughs> Lifehouse, Tri-State Recovery Care, just did an incredible job. Uh, you'll hear more about that because they, they're just growing. And thank you guys for, for being here as well. After service, there's gonna be cake and a big gutter full of ice cream, like a long gutter. I don't know, it's just help yourself, right? So we wanna, we wanna honor everybody here to enjoy that as well. So we're excited. Uh, I see Lisa there as well. Steph was singing on that first song. I think that was that song, the first song we sang, one of the first songs. And then Lisa just came in. She's been back with the kids. So there's a lot of good things that are happening. We're just excited. And I wanna thank you for who you are to me. I mean that from my heart, I really do. Thank you. I have a passion for you to be all you're supposed to be and to walk in the trenches of life with you. And uh, we do that here. So thank you for just allowing me to be me and not having to try to be somebody else. One of the greatest revelations I ever had is when I didn't have to be somebody else. I could just be me. And thank you for allowing me to be me because I want you to be you. I don't want you to be anybody else but you. 
You bring your baggage, you bring your junk, you bring your good, you bring all your stuff. We work it all together because somehow God works it all together for the good. And then he turns it into something great. And I'm thankful to be a part of watching, witnessing it with you and living life and working life with that with you guys. Thank you. So with that said, happy anniversary. I'm not one to look at my notes mostly, but I'm gonna have to today. But I do know this, it's time to receive our tithe and offering. So you've, some of you all that were all sentimental, just get all sentimental again when you receive our tithe and offering. It's time to receive our tithe and offering. We're gonna sow into the kingdom today, sow in what God's doing. We're gonna worship some more in a few moments, and I'm gonna bring a message a little later called Cutting the Cord, Ezekiel chapter 16. Are you ready to give? There's two ways, two traditional ways you can give. You can give through cash or check. Envelopes are underneath your seat. Grab that offering envelope, make your checks payable to ECH. Or you can do what a lot of people are doing these days. Many of our people do it. I do it this way. It's 84321 is our text giving. If you've never given by text, you type in the two number, that 84321 into the sender who you're sending it to. In the, the content of the body of the message, just type in the amount that you're gonna give. The first time you do it, it comes back, gives you a link. You put your bank information, similar to like you do a Netflix, iTunes, uh, all those different things put it in the first time, then every time thereafter, you just put the amount in, and then it immediately sends you back a receipt. We keep the receipts record, recorded here in the financial department, and then they'll send you a, a, a report every year so you can use for your, your tax contributions. Amen? Remember, we don't give out of obligation. We don't give because you have to. We believe in Malachi 3.10. We believe in Malachi chapter three where God, you know, he wants tithes. He believes in tithing. But we don't believe that you give God money and have to pay your tithe, otherwise, for protection. We really believe, I've preached it myself, guys. I've had to repent. The reality of it is we don't give so God will just, he's not the Godfather. He's just not some, he's just, we're not having to pay for protection. He's, he's not that way. He gives you protection anyway. Amen. He loves you anyway. Amen. You're giving because of Right, because you love him. Yeah. You're giving him because he's blessed you. You're giving him because your heart is, a, is fixated on him. It's an affection towards him is why we give. We're not giving for any other reason, right? That's the main purpose. It's all through relationship is why you give. So today when you give, give for relationship. Are you ready? Everybody ready? Whether you have something to give or you have nothing to give, pray this prayer with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless you with my tithe. I bless you with my offering. And most of all, Lord, I bless you with my heart. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Be blessed as you give. It is good to see Candace Freeman back there. Last, yeah. Been praying for Candace. Candace had surgery on her back. There was some you know, question about how much nerve damage was there because she had had the the, the pinched nerve for so long, came through the surgery well, in recovery now, and going through re re rehabilitation, and uh, doing well, and is able to be here with us today. So that is an amazing blessing, amazing blessing. So we're glad to see you, and Glenn, thanks for being here. In fact, while we're doing that, let's do this. Let's put some stuff on the, the points of praise on there. There's some highlights that we've seen this week. This week, well, the whole month of, uh, of September, I kept getting calls from Madison Park um, Nursing Home, Assisted Living Center down um, off of Madison Avenue, and they kept saying, listen, we need your church to come in here and do some services for our, our elderly, our seniors. So we said, okay, you know, we figured out. So we had a meeting last week, and Tom and Ernie ran down there, and we were in there starting next month, October. First Wednesday this month, we're in Madison Park doing nursing home ministry, right? So any of you all that would be, want to be a part of that, see Tom or Ernie, you can see them and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, Bill Glover, which plays the bass for us here, and Pam are in North Carolina. Um, Sarah and Chris had their baby girl, Peyton Grace, was born this past week, healthy, blessed, right? The only problem with that, they live in North Carolina, and Bill and Pam have, the, her, their daughter is the only daughter. So you know what that means? 
Bill's retired. Can you see the writing on the wall? Somebody gonna be relocating real soon to North Carolina. Now that that baby's here. So congratulations to them. Um, Vicki Cole. Vicki Cole is retiring from Marshall University this past week. And she's launched into a whole new business of, on, on how to cook and healthy and do things the, the right way, which we all need to do for, for kids. And uh, so you need to talk to her. She does things at the Wild Ramp. She does things here. She does things around the, the, the community. So that business has been launched and affords her to be able to retire. Uh, her and Pat uh, and great, do a great thing around here. Pat's always working around the church doing things and works in the recovery um, ministry too. And um, just a lot of good things that are happening. Here's some things we wanna pray about this week while we're moving into prayer. There are many business owners we have in the church, many. Many businesses are on that threshold of just whew, accelerating, many, all right? We need favor and increase on our businesses. People that we're connected to, businesses we're connected to, right? We want growth, we want increase. That's what the Lord does. It's God gives the increase, right? We need him to give increase for them and knowing how also, not only on increase, but the right people in the right places to manage the increase so the increase can be sustained. I've seen more businesses go out of business that grew out of business because they couldn't manage it, it was hard and it got out of hand. So I wanna bless our businesses and bless them that they have a complete total package as God brings increase. Also, Catherine Cox, is she here this morning? She's back in the back of the kids too probably, right? Catherine is a business owner as well. She's retired from the um, Huntington Museum of Art and her, she was recalled this past week from a, an art gallery in New York City to bring her stuff up there. And they're in negotiations and discussions now to, to put her stuff, her work, on an exhibit on, in New York City. Isn't that great? Yeah. I used to say Jonathan, I used to say Jonathan was Catherine's husband, but I guess it's official now. Catherine is now, she, it's all the way around. Now you're, you're right, you're her husband instead of her being your wife. That's his building he's building out back for his sculpture. He's retiring this coming May from Marshall as well. And uh, you guys are getting to know everybody this morning. And that's good. I feel like I'm going deep into the lives of everybody, but that's okay. Are we good? And I need you to still be in prayer. That building over on the corner is ours. We gotta figure out a way to get it, and there's things that are happening that are moving, and we need a, a way to get it, and God's gonna provide that way. I have never been so, I'm as sure about that building and that property as I am about this property here. That's how confident I am. And I'm just as undecided how it's gonna happen as I was this building too, okay? But the Lord knows, he's the way, the truth, and the life. That is an order. It's not life, truth, and way. It is way, truth, and life. It happens that way. You go to the way, discover truth. And as you discover truth, you change. And as you adapt and change, you experience life. And that life more abundantly. Are you ready to receive that? Let's receive more, let's go into some more worship tonight, to this morning. I 
His presence, there is joy beyond all measure. Rejoice for these days. Greater things we pray to come. We see them in our time. Your power in hand and love always. I am made for these days. So raise your heart, sing to Him. Praise Him for all of His ways. No fear can stop what He began. We are called for these days. We are called for these days. And I 
take hold of what held me, speaking out hope and faith. No devil in hell can come against what he is doing these days. Raise your heart, sing to him, praise him for all of his ways. No, no fear can stop what he began. We're called for the Never again to wander far His goodness has made us free His power has set our lives ablaze That's what He's doing these days That's what He's doing these days Raise your heart, sing to him, praise him for all of his ways. No fear can stop what he began. We're called for these days. No fear can stop what he began. We're called for these days. We're called for these days.
won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, light you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up.
every voice sing that out. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I've found peace the night I could learn it, I don't deserve it. Father, we feel your presence in here today. We're overwhelmed with your goodness, your faithfulness and your love, your compassion. Lord, how you can be good when sometimes we don't even know how to be good. Lord, you're faithful even sometimes when we don't even know how to be faithful. And you love us, God, even in sometimes in spite when we don't even know how to love. You chase us down and you pour your love on us and it's so consuming sometimes, Lord, that when we stop and think about just how good you are to us, we're overwhelmed. I don't know why you do what you do, but you do. I try to see what motivates you, Lord, but even in my limited capacity, I can just see so far but you go further and deeper. People give up on us, Lord, but you never do. Sometimes we give up on ourselves, but you never do. Your love compels, your love draws, your love moves, it restores, it repairs, it recovers. It gives joy that surpasses even our own understanding. It gives peace when our mind is full of confusion. It heals the pains, it heals the bruises. It removes the fears, your love. And Father, this morning, we thank you for your love. We bless you. We honor you and we're eternally grateful for what you have done and what you're doing for us. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Hey, while you're seated, we're gonna go ahead and dismiss our little ones, the um, middle school all the way up through high school. <clears throat> you guys know where you're going. You can follow Brad and Lauren or Michael and Bridget. Charlie is over there too. He's gonna take the middle school age. Worship was good. Amen. Yeah. Oh, hi, Deidre. You got a what? What'd she say? A new cousin. I thought you said a new son. I said, no, Mary, you don't. No, there was one Mary in the Bible. You got a new cousin. How, 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 much, she, how much she weigh? What's the name? Well, congratulations, Dietra. Isn't that awesome? Amen. <laughs> well, more power to her. Isn't God good? 
He really is. Ezekiel chapter 16. Let's cut the cord. Boy, all those kids left. Is there anybody in here that's in seventh, eighth, or up through high school that you're hiding underneath a chair or behind your mom or your dad? Because we're gonna scout you out. You gotta go. You really need to be in those classes. If you know anybody, this is a good time because over it's like a 10-week period. They're gonna really pour in to these young people and really get into the word and get into re relationship and connectivity. <clears throat> the youth have their Wednesday night service over there, it's an encounter, but during Sunday after worship, we dismiss them and they're doing about a 10 week series that are age specific over specific topics. And we bring in some of the older people, when I say older, I don't get offended, mature people, p parents and people have been in ministry for a while and life for a while and they come in occasionally and pour into the kids. So uh, it's great. Ezekiel chapter 16, are you ready? This is uh, God talking to uh, the prophet Ezekiel and he's telling him to give him a warning, uh, talking to the, the Jerusalem, telling the children of Israel. And um, you know, sometimes you just need a reminder. You know what I'm talking about? You ever just go through something in life and you get to a place where you're going, my God, I don't know if I got much more in me. Amen. You feel like, I don't have much energy. I mean, even though I'm going as hard and fast as I can go, and it never seems like you're going, and you feel like you're just running on the treadmill and you're just not going anywhere, and, and then life just deals you a blow or just something just knocks you off balance and you're looking for something more. And sometimes you just need an encourage, encouraging word. Well, you can always leave it up to the Lord to come and encourage you. But sometimes when he gives you an encouragement and he takes you from a place to a place in your transition of life, and maybe you're different than me, but my experience has always been, I don't know how to go from here to there, mountain to mountain without having to go through a valley. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I wish it was just a hop, skip, and a jump, but sometimes it just seems like a hop, and then you fall. And when I say fall, you're just down and out sometimes for a while, thinking, God, is this ever going to change? Do I ever see the light at the end of the tunnel? Lord, what is really happening here? And if you're not careful, you can get so discouraged that you just get down on yourself, but you gotta know where you are in your seasons, and those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew your strength you will, your strength will renew. It just don't feel like strength at the time. And there's times in our life that we have to have just reminders of what the Lord is doing and what the Lord has done for us. He's talking to the children of Israel and he says, thus says the Lord God to Jerusalem. Your birth and your nativity are from the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your nativity, on the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut. You, you were, not only were you born on the wrong side, you were connected to the wrong side and stayed connected to the wrong side. You were destined for, 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 for trouble. You were destined to do things different and wrong. Nor were you washed in water to cleanse you. You were not rubbed with salt nor wrapped in swaddling clothes. No, I pitied you to do any of these things for you, you, have com you have, to have compassion on you, but you were thrown out into the open field, when you yourself were loathed on the day that you were born. But when I passed by, I passed by you and I saw you struggling in your own blood. I said to you, in your blood. I said to you, God says to them, in your situation. I said to you, in the midst of your, everybody turning against you. I said to you against what everybody was thinking about you, even what you were thinking about yourself. You saw yourself not going forward, you were going backward, you felt like you were dying, you felt like giving up, you felt like it's over, what am I gonna do? You're, you're looking at your kids, your kids are spinning out of control because you're spinning out of control. And you're thinking, how can I make this thing different? What do I do different? How does it change? And you're going, I, I don't know how to fix it. And if you jump in and try to fix it, you can't, but God says live. Amen. He sees you in your state. He sees you in your condition. He, even though your condition sometimes overwhelms us with life and it looks like we're going under, God sees you in the midst of that and says live. Do you realize he prophesied over your life when you didn't even know how to prophesy over your own life? When you thought it was falling apart, when you thought it was over, God said live. Now the, the problem is, the challenge is, from the time he says live and the time you experience in living is some time. That's the challenge. But God looks at him and he says, look, when you were in your blood, you were cut, you were, you were still connected to, you were still doing things wrong, trying to figure out things in your own way, and I'm telling you live. 
And even though I told you to live, you were still connected to the old way of living. The old way of trying to figure it out for yourself. The old way of demanding I should do right. Your wills and your wants and your, your do's and your don'ts. All your, my, my, based on my performance, God. The Lord says this. While you were sitting there trying to figure out measuring your relationship with me based on what you've done right and what you've done wrong, I overlooked all your rights and I overlooked all your wrongs. And I said live. While you're still connected to your own performance, you are still got the umbilical cord to the old way of life, the old man, even though you're a new creature, you're still connected to the old man because you're choosing to base your decisions and my goodness based on your performance. And the Lord says, live, live. Yes, I said to you, in your blood, in your mess. You might be in a mess here this morning. You might have just come out of a mess. You might be going ready to go into one. Whatever your situation and season of life is, I've got the good news. Whether you're connected at the cord to the old way of life, or you don't know which way to turn, God says live. And when he says live, he looks over his word to perform it. It's not just an option. He doesn't look at you and say, live, here's an option. He says live because it's a commandment that he's commanding, not for you to do better, for him to perform his word. That's not only a prophecy, it's a promise in your life. Live. You can do it. Not by doing better, but by believing he's gonna do it through you. Here's what he says, live. I made you thrive like a plant in the field. You grew, matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed, your hair grew, but you were, listen, you were naked and bare. When I passed by you again and looked upon you, indeed, your time was the time of love. So I spread my wing over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore an oath to you and entered into a covenant with you, and you became Mine, says the Lord, that I washed you in water. Yes, I thoroughly washed off your blood and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you in embroidered clothes and gave you the sandals of badger skin. I clothed you with the fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with ornaments, put bracelets on your wrists and a chain on your neck. And I put a jewel in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. Thus, you were adorned with gold and silver, and your clothing was of fine linen, silk and embroidered cloth. You ate pastry of fine flour, honey, and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty. Listen to this, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord God. We can close right there. I can elaborate, but it says what it is. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. He comes right in the middle of your situation and circumstances, and he says live. He not only makes you live, he causes you to rise up. He causes you to rise up and makes you beautiful. Beautiful, and you're going, I'm not, but I don't feel beautiful. It don't matter what you feel. It's a matter how he made you. And the more you get to line up how you see, how he sees you, the more you start seeing your self-image change. Too many of us have our self-image based on the old way because we've been hurt and disappointed before. And we've got God as this judge or he's on this, he's up there watching everything that's going on and you're performing while he's holding up the cards going, you're doing a five today instead of a 10. I need to do a better, you do a better performance. It's not about your performance. It's about him and his relationship with you. He will look over his word to perform it. His word has never returned back to him void. It always accomplishes that which he set forth to accomplish. And I got good news for you. His word is Jesus the Christ. And Christ never will, nothing will fall to the ground. It always gonna come back to fruition for him because it's his word in us and the promise we have. I don't care what kind of mess you've made of your life. I don't care what kind of decisions that you've made that has created the situations and circumstances you've created yourself. I just know this. If you continue to stay connected to the co- with the cord of the old way of life, 
the old performance living, the old way of trying to figure out God, if I do well, will you bless me? If I do bad, will you curse me? I, get off all that stuff. It's not a matter of how good you are, it's how good he is. Yeah. It's not a matter of how faithful you are, even though you should try to be faithful. It has nothing to do with that. It's how good he is and how faithful he is. The more revelation and understanding you get of his goodness, the better you'll be. The more understanding of his faithfulness, the more faithful you'll be. It doesn't work the other way. You don't prove yourself to achieve his faithfulness. He's faithful, now you can live out of his faithfulness and become faithful. He's so good, you can now live out of his goodness and become good. See, the church has taken on this identity crisis because we're still cut into this whole mold and, and, our, and we're connected to the old way of life. We've got the old covenant and the new covenant and we're mixing and mingling these things together and trying to get a, a result. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's got to become a place where we're living in this thing and we're seeing him for who he is and out of our understanding of who he is, a transformation takes place in us. It's not a mirror that we sit over here and say, God, I see you are kind, now let me try to become kind and act kind. That's not how it works. Because if you could turn on kindness, you could turn off kindness. If you could turn on love, you could turn off love. If you could turn on self-control, you'll turn off self-control. The bottom line is, when you see him the way he is, he transforms you into his image. It's like being out in the sun. I say this all the time, it's like being out in the sun. You're not gonna be out in the sun, under the sun, and not walk away from sunburn. When you're in his presence and in his revelation, and the actuality of who he is, the truth of who he is, he then becomes transference on you. You can't help not to get what he is. And you begin to see people with compassion because guess what, I need compassion. When you see him as compassionate, you become compassionate to other people. You don't just look at people and say, I probably need to become kind, I need to be kind to them. No, you can't turn kindness, and kind, kind, kindness on and kindness off. You are either kind or not kind. See, the word of truth is to transfer, transform us into his image, to be like him, not to imitate, to become. He didn't want us to be clones of Jesus. That's why he birthed us. We take on his DNA, we take on his characteristics. And the church world a lot is we're out here trying to live this thing outside in instead of the inside at world. And sometimes we just need reminded. I know what it was like when I was dead in my trespasses and sins. I know what it was like when I didn't have a, a, a place to turn, my life was falling apart. I didn't have the right words to say. Maybe you did, I didn't. I know what it was like, I know, I know what it feels like when, when things happen to you that you didn't expect happened to you and you didn't cause them to happen, they just happened because somebody else made a situation and a ter determination. I know what it's like to cause them myself by my own decisions. But regardless if you caused them or somebody else caused them, the issue still remains, I can get out of this one way. If I stay connected to the core of the old way, all I can do is the best I can measure up to. But the minute I cut that cord, and I come and I adapt into him and I take on who he is. I recognize that my nativity goes from my old way to his way. My new life goes from the old way to the new way. How do I do that practically? How do I function in life doing that? You have to understand and believe who he is, number one. He is not only just the alpha and the omega, he is the beginning and the end, right? It's a great song to sing and a great prayer to pray, but you've gotta know he begins yeah. and he ends. He authors, he finishes. Yeah. If he authors and he finishes, he's also in the process, yeah. even when you can't see him. Right. See, sometimes we hold on to the cord because we don't understand what he's doing in the process. But oh, in the process. I've never seen anybody transformed into his image at the beginning. I only see people transform in the process and discover who they become in the end. He is the beginning and the end. He's in the middle. And so many people wanna abort the process of change and transition of life. It's hard. I know what it's like. You know what it's like. You've been there. Of, what, do I, what am I gonna do? I don't see any way out. I don't, see any, I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't know how this turns. Uh, you start forecasting and you start playing all these sequence of events in your head that you've never even come to in real life. 
and you're saying, well, if this happens and that happens, then I'll do this and then that. If that don't happen, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. Stop all that. If you trust he's the author, you gotta trust he's the finisher. If you trust he's the author and the finisher, you gotta trust that he's also in the middle of every situation that you're facing. He's not gonna leave you. And it's not desperate and it's not, because what happens is that the fear comes to us in the middle of the gap from the time it begins until the time it ends. Fear comes right here. Fear comes to wear you down, to cause you to, to doubt, cause you to look at him and say, God, where are you? Or better yet, take measures into your own hands to try to help God along. You been there? I've done it. And then God has to, in his grace, his mercy, he will have to undo what I did to help him out. Anybody been there? Oh yeah. God helped me get through it. I got through it. Now I created more problems for you, God. So now, Lord, not only do I want you to get me out of the jam I started with, I need you to get me out of the jam I created in the middle of the journey. And the lie of the devil will tell you that he won't do that because you got yourself in it. But I got news for you, he'll get you out of that too. Because <laughs> he's faithful. He's faithful. Listen, he's faithful. He is faithful. He is true. He is righteous. He's love. He is, and he tells you to live. I don't know what kind of prophecies you've had all of your life. Maybe people have spoken over you and said, you are not amount to anything. You, you made your own bed, you're gonna have to lay in it. Maybe you do, maybe you did. But you got a word from him that he said to Jerusalem, he's saying it to you this morning, yes. live. Right. I saw you in your blood. I saw you when you were, 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 when nobody wanted. I saw you when you were naked and ashamed and afraid and nobody wanted. You're looking at yourself going, what am I gonna do now? You're looking at kids, you're looking at your kids like you're a failure. You're going, oh my God, I, they deserve better, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hemmed in. I don't know what to do right here in the middle of my situation. And you start seeing them act out a certain way and you start to personalize that, putting it on yourself because you're thinking, they're that way because I made them that way because when I'm in the middle of that, they're seeing me and what could I have done differently? And then condemnation starts creeping on you, creeping on you, creeping on you. And the Lord says, I saw you in your condemnation. I saw you in the middle of your, your, your nakedness. I saw you when you're trying to figure it out for yourself and I'm telling you in the pool of your own blood, I said live. Amen. Amen. Live. Yeah. You don't have to die, you can live. You don't have to lay there, you can live. I need you to muster up enough belief to trust me that even though you can't even move out of your situation, I'm gonna move you out of your situation. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you don't even know the next step, I am the next step. <laughs> Even though you don't even know where to turn, turn to me. And if nothing seems to be happening, trust me that something is still happening. Even if it looks like I don't hear you, I'm hearing you. Even if it looks like I'm not pushing anything away, I'm pushing everything away. Because I'm storyboarding in this thing and I'm pushing this thing in place and I'm making the, the pieces all come together because when I come together and finally reveal it to you, I want you to know you're gonna have a crown on your head uh, you're gonna have a crown on your head, you're gonna be clothed in righteousness, and you're gonna stand up, and you're gonna be able to look at your situation and say, you thought you were taking me down, but the Lord was taking me up. And you're gonna know it's him. The people will think maybe you had something to do with it, but you're gonna know, if it was not for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it. Even though, Sorrow may last for a bit, right? Joy comes in the morning. Yeah. Even though tears sometimes crawl falling down your face and you have no answers and your heart feels hollow and sorrowful and you're going, God, I don't even feel anything. God, where are you? And you may, he may not even give you a real epiphany answer at that moment, but you gotta know something on the inside of you says, live. Yeah. Your kids desire for you to live. You deserve for you to live. Your grandchildren that you don't even know that are here deserve for you to live. Lisa was holding Jackson when he came in, Lauren and Bradley's son. Jackson's just turned two, two and a half, he'll be three in December. He's walking around, and I'm looking at that picture. And that picture was the first worship service that I didn't even really wanna do. And I'm looking at that church service. And I'm looking at that thing going, my God, there's 66 people in that building. She comes carrying Jackson in, and I look back there. Jackson wasn't in that picture, but Lauren was. And if Lauren was in that picture, guess who was in that picture? Amen. Jackson was in that picture. Yes. 
He wasn't even born yet, wasn't even thought of yet. Or he better not have been, I don't think, right? <laughs> but he wasn't born yet. Are you hearing me? He wasn't. So look at this. So in Lauren was Jackson. Jackson come walking in here into a building that we didn't even know existed when we started that thing. Yeah. He said, live. Yeah. And the reason he says live is because what he has stored up for you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, or entered into the heart of man what I've got prepared for you. Yeah. You have no idea of the promises and the blessing and the joy that he's got stored up for you. Yeah, but I'm disqualified because I made all this mistake. Cut the cord. I don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel worthy. Cut the worthiness cord. I'm not faithful. I made some bad. Cut the cord. I'm subject to my environment. Cut the cord. You don't know what I've done in my life. Cut that cord. I've, made, I've gone through some point of, I've passed some points of no return. I can't undo what I've done. Cut the cord. I burned some bridges, cut the cord. I made a mess of the last one, cut that cord. I'm reaping what I sowed. Cut that cord. Why don't you want to reap what he sowed? Cut it. Cut the cord of human performance and your own worthiness and your own intellect and your own ability to make your own decisions. And no, doing. Cut that cord. Cut the cord of putting pressure on you to make everything fixed and right. Cut that cord. Cut the cord that you're getting older and years are passing you by. Cut that cord. I messed it up so many times, I don't even feel like I got the energy to do it. Cut that cord. I don't know how to balance life. I'm called into ministry, I'm called into my job. My life's going fast and, and I don't know how to get, and I feel like I'm neglecting all my kids, I'm neglecting all the people around. Cut that cord. How do I do it? I gotta, it's, it's gotta, it's, I've gotta, yes, you do have to do it. But if you get you doing it and God blessing it, you're gonna miss it. You need God's blessing and then you do it. Yeah. You don't get the cart before the horse. You don't have, it's not the tail wagging the dog. It's the Lord's doing. Get him in his proper place. Yeah. Live from a place of live. Then all these things will be added to you. The church is completely out of order for some reason and I've been a part of preaching that message and living that message and I still do it to this day, trying to find myself every day living life and to manage the tension and the, the battle between my human effort and the Lord blessing. Because faith without works is dead. But if you think you're gonna work to get faith, you're out of your mind. Settle the issue this morning. Settle it. You gotta cut the cord. Cut the cord to what? To my self-help, my self-focus, my self-rightness, my self-dependency, my self-reliance, Because the best yourself is going to do is in your own pool of blood, naked and ashamed. But while you're in it, listen to the voice of the Lord that says, while you were in it, I walked by you and I saw you in your own blood. I saw you in emptiness, I saw you in your loneliness, I saw you in your despair. I saw you when you've been turned away from and people have disregarded you and turned on you and betrayed you. I, I see, I've seen you in your hurt. I've seen you in your tears, your pain. I've seen all that. And I'm telling you, in the midst of all of that, live. Yeah. I don't know how to live. The first step is embracing his living. Who is he? I can't tell you any more clearer this morning. He's faithful. I can tell you story after story after in the Bible. It doesn't always look pretty, because blood's not pretty. 
Nakedness is not, not a good place to be sometimes. But in the midst of all of that, he still says live. Yes. When you're stripped of everything, live. When you don't feel like living, live. Yes. What I'm saying, don't you lose focus. Don't you lose hope. Don't you lose your determination on him. Amen. When you can't breathe, you know good and well he's got your breath. Yes. When you know you can't walk, he's got your next step. When you know you don't even know what the next day looks like and the overwhelming depression and anxiety and all these things start, oppression, everything starts hitting you left and right, you just gotta know, I, I can't move it, I don't know what to do to get rid of it, but I know this, he said live. If you can't muster up anything other than the fact is, God, you said for me to live. If you can't say anything, you can't see anything, just know in your heart, God said for me to live. And in that relationship, in that connection, that is the beginning of your faith. Yes. And as your faith takes hold, something on the inside of you starts coming alive. Yes. You won't rely on your old way. You won't rely on your own condition. Your circumstances will not be able to hold you down. If the grave couldn't hold him, Amen. if the cross couldn't keep him down, yes. you think your situation is gonna stop him from bringing you out of death into life? No way. Hey. He's gonna bring you. He is faithful to the end. You may not see the end yet, but you're gonna be seeing it soon. Why? Because, and we always look at the end because we're hoping here every it comes back. Jesus, hurry up and come back to get us out of here. I want him to come back too, and he's coming back. But until he comes back, I gotta live. He deserves for me to live. He deserves for you to live. If he gets less than us living, the cross doesn't get what it's paid for. The Lord just said fear has gripped so many in here. You're afraid of losing. You're afraid because you're, you're, you're just, a, you're, you fear, just afraid. You're afraid of what tomorrow holds. You're afraid of, you don't even trust yourself. You're afraid of your own self. And the Lord says, I did not give you that spirit of fear and timidity. I gave you the spirit and the power of power, love, and of a sound mind. Live. Cut the cord of fear. He said, there's some of you in here that are full of shame because you did everything they said you did. You did it. And, the, and, and, and they, you even did more than what they said. You just didn't get caught. He said, so shame has hit you. So you're willing to take on whatever they throw at you because, just because you feel like you deserve the worst. And the Lord says, you do deserve the worst in your own blood. But cut the cord. Expect the best. Expect favor. Expect to turn. Expect to see him in the midst of your situation and circumstance. He said he didn't, he didn't put that shame on you. He didn't put fear on you. And there's some in here you're experiencing some good time right now. And you're waiting on something to happen because it's almost too good to be true. So you're feeling like a panic, a, a little bit of anxiousness, because you feel like I don't deserve what I'm experiencing. And the Lord says, live. Quit worrying, quit being anxious, live. The Lord says, tell them this. Tell them to look for my ways. Tell them my ways aren't the ways they think they are. They think I'm not in the midst of their turmoil. But sometimes I will allow that turmoil to be created so I can reveal myself to them and move them into the place I want them to be so they can live. 
They didn't realize they were dying in their current state. It was just a slow death. So I allowed circumstances to happen and people to come in to change that circumstance so they wouldn't die. And now I've, I've removed all those obstacles. I've pushed them through the process. I've led them through the valley. And now they've come up on the other side. And now I'm telling you to live. Understand that the promises of the Lord are yes and amen. And they're for me and they're for you. Bow your heads and close your eyes real quick, if you don't mind. I just heard the Lord again. Somebody in here, and maybe more than one, you have lived a life of condemnation. You're just, you're, you're, you just cannot forgive yourself. The guilt, the weight of the world is on your shoulders because you really feel responsible. If you don't make every right move, things are gonna fall apart for you. And you're thinking that you gotta please the Lord by doing everything right. Well, the Lord wants to bless you. He wants to remove that, 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 that pressure so you can make right decisions out of ease and not out of the pressure. He says, but the first thing you have to do this morning is you've got to remove the guilt and the condemnation of your sin. And some of you are still feeling the, the effects of your sin in your life and you feel so responsible, you've not let him cut that cord of your old way of life and embracing the new way. And I'm gonna count to three. And if you still feel condemned and have been carrying condemnation, even though you've been to the altar and maybe had your sins forgiven, but you still walked up and three or four days later, you picked them back up again because you still feel the guilt of them. I'm talking about getting rid of all condemnation and walking in a new way and cutting the cord of the dead, condemned life. If that's you, I'm gonna count to three and I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. I see hands everywhere. Those of you that raised your hand, I'm gonna invite you to come to the altar and kneel down and pray. So you have some people that's gonna come and pray with you. We gotta get that cord cut, get the condemnation off of you. If, you. if you raise your hand, just come up to the front and just kneel down to the altar. And we're gonna have somebody agree in prayer with you. Still feeling the effects of your condemnation. Would you all stand with me, please?
Is there anybody in here having a, a pain in their lower back? Lower, right in the middle of their lower back. I just felt one in mine. That's usually when the Lord tells me that somebody's got one. Anybody have a lower pain, lower back pain problem? Anybody right here? Would you guys come on up here? Maria, you and Rachel, if you would want to pray for lower back. Anybody having some ear issues, hearing issues? Hey, come on up. Ronnie, would you pray for him? Mike, Mike, would you pray for Coach, if you don't mind, in his back, lower back. How many agree when God saw you in your condition, not only when you first got saved, but when even in a condition you might be in right now, when he saw you in your condition, he looked at you and he says, I want you to live. How many are ready to cut that cord of fear and shame and abandonment and rejection and say, no, I'm gonna live. I don't know what it looks like. I don't necessarily know how to get there, but I'm gonna trust that he's gonna take me every step of the way. I can lean on him when I don't know. Every step belongs to him. And even though I may have a setback, it looks like it just knocked me off balance and knocked me off guard, I can still trust him because he is the author and the finisher. Yeah. We can do this in him. And then at the end of that thing, when it's revealed to you, you will not change the process for anything. You'd say this, I never wanna go through that again, but I wouldn't trade this for anything in this world. That's how you know the Lord said live. Father, in Jesus' name, as we walk out of here today, I bless my brothers, my sisters, their families. I say, God, let them cut that cord. Cut that cord of yesterday. Cut that cord of the past. Cut that cord of trying to figure it out on their own. Cut that cord of self-reliance and self-righteousness. Cut that cord of yesterday and say, I want to live. I agree with you, Lord. Live. We come in agreement. I put our faith in agreement with you today that we shall live and shall not die. We shall have peace and not confusion. We shall have health and not sickness and disease. We will walk out of here with the power and the love and the sound mind and know that the world is waiting for us to be the living life that you've called us to be. And we will experience it, life, and that life more abundantly because you deserve the reward of all your suffering on that cross. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen, amen. God bless you all. See you all Wednesday night.